In today's episode, we talk about how to analyze a market when you're trying to invest in real estate. Check it out. Welcome to another episode of Same Page. We are your hosts, Sarah Simagist. And I'm Lenal Simagist. Today, we're talking about how to analyze a real estate market. A lot of questions that we get Mm -hmm. is how to choose a market, right? Um, There's so many different markets where you can invest, and sometimes it's overwhelming, right? Do I invest in Toronto? Do I invest in Ottawa? Do I invest in BC? Do I invest in... You know, um, all the surrounding little towns, Kingston, or do I go in the smaller markets, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so we will tell you what what we look at when we're trying to analyze a market and what helps us our decision. Before you even choose a market, you have to know your goal. You have to know if you're looking for cash flow or if you're looking for appreciation. Because that's going to determine what type of markets that you're going to look at. So, for example, if you're looking for cash flow, you're probably not going to look at primary markets that are really expensive, like Toronto, like Ottawa, maybe even Kingston. Um, Because unless you get a really, 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 really big discount, there's not a lot of cash flow. And I say that with caution because some people will say, well, the property cash flows but there's um, everybody calculates cash flows differently, and we account for a lot of different contingencies. And in our metrics, a lot of the time, the primary markets does not cash flow. Mm-hmm. That being said, once you choose a market, um, this is what you have to look for. Yeah, the first thing you should look for is definitely what drives the economy in that market. So when it comes to the economy, it, it, it boils down to employment. What are the major industries in that um, in that market? Um, and like, why are people moving to that market? So there needs to be a reason why people go to, to a certain area. And for the most part, it has to do with jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, so you need to find out uh, what industries are very, are, are, are very prevalent in that market. Um, and also uh, what sectors um, um, are involved in that market as well. Like if you look, if we take Ottawa, for example, we have the federal government, Mm -hmm. which is, which is huge, which, which employs a lot of employees. Then you have, um, we have several, several universities here, Mm -hmm. several hospitals. Um, and then, um, also we have several, several schools, like as far as elementary schools. Um, so, so there's lots of various types and, and, and those are mostly, mostly the, the private sector, sorry, the, uh, the public right. sector. But then if you look in the private sector, there's a lot more other industries as well. Um, if you look at Canada North, uh, with their, um, um, high tech, um, industry and all that stuff. So it's like those, and obviously we, uh, another thing too, that we have, uh, more, more recently is, uh, is Amazon that came into the city. So mm-hmm. all those aspects. Um, are things that you need to consider when you're evaluating um, a market because uh, when 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 you have those aspects there, then you know that there's going to be a migration of people coming into the city and 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 stimulating the economy. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned Ottawa and how you know it has multiple employers, mm-hmm. but if you're looking at a smaller city, there there might be just a few of them. Mm-hmm. So how many of these employers should you be? looking for in order to be okay to invest in that market now I, when i'm looking at a small market i'd feel comfortable uh, especially if there's a hospital in that market mm-hmm. if there's a if there's like a like a post-secondary school there mm-hmm. either a college or university uh walmart <laughs> if there's a walmart or a right. costco usually those are good indicators that it's a it, it's, it's a pretty decent sized city um and then uh you want to look at whether or not there's a starbucks and then any financial institutions okay if there's if there's a, a, a variety of banks in in that particular region that's usually a good indication that um, there's some type of economic stimulus going on in that market okay the second thing that I look at when I'm um, choosing a market is the population growth so I want to make sure that the population is increasing and not decreasing 
Because if it's decreasing, then that means that people are um, leaving this market. And which means that if you have a rental property, maybe right now you have, you know, you have a lot of choices um, as far as rent uh, tenants. Mm -hmm. But if it continues to decrease, maybe at some point there'll be a, a higher vacancy rate. So you want to make sure that the pop the population is growing so that you know that you always have um, people who want to live there, therefore people who want to rent your apartments. Mm -hmm. Another factor that you need to, to, to look into when analyzing a market are the market rents in that area. Uh, so as an investor, you want to be able to rent out your units, especially if you're doing a buy and hold strategy, at the highest highest price possible. Um, and then but but then at the same time like only certain markets allow a certain level of, of, of these of these rents so if you look at Toronto for example uh, Toronto's you can you can demand very high rent for a small <laughs> for a small little, small, small little box yeah a small little space uh, and then um, Ottawa is pretty up there too so you want to be able to uh, to, to be in a, to be in a position or to be in a market where you can offer decent rents. Another thing that I look at, um, this is typically for secondary markets. I, if I'm gonna invest in a secondary market, I want to make sure that this, there's a quick access to the primary market. So I want to make sure that there's a, there's a direct route, so like a major highway that leads you to the primary market because that tells me that somebody can live in that secondary market but has an easy access to the primary market. So maybe they can work in that, um, in that primary market. For example, if you live in Campville, which is a secondary market, there's an easy access to Ottawa. So you could live in Campville. Um, the price of living is a lot cheaper there. And then you can, you know, have access to Ottawa within half an hour, mm -hmm. 35 minutes, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, I would invest in Canville because I do know how close it is and that there's an easy access to a primary market. So those are just a couple of items that we look uh, for whenever we're analyzing a new market, whether, whether to invest in or not. But as Sarah alluded to at the very beginning, it all depends on what your ultimate goal is, whether you're, you're investing to try and generate cash flow or in, investing to try and, and tap into the equity of your property mm -hmm. and at the end of the day once you choose your market um, it could be close to you or it could be far away it doesn't really matter what matters is if you have a good power team to help you manage the properties that you purchase in that market so don't be afraid to um, to really look outside of your own market because a lot of people tend to want to purchase where they live but that doesn't necessarily um, meet their their goals they're not able to actually you know either cash flow or the pre get the appreciation that they want in the market that they live so don't be afraid to analyze different markets and choose somewhere else and use your your network to find a good power team thank you for joining us guys like every like always don't forget to like subscribe we want to hear your comments and all that stuff and till next time don't forget to live your truth